it was 3 a.m., bitterly cold. I was struggling to bend my fingers despite the layers and layers of clothing. The wind was howling so loud around me that I couldn't even hear my shallow breathing. With 4,900 meters still to go, with the stars and the darkness and a small headlamp light to guide me, what was I thinking? Climbing the highest mountain in Africa, Mount Kilimanjaro, a mountain that is seven times taller than the tallest man-made structure on earth, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. What was I thinking? Immediately, my mind shouted back at me. It's for mental health, you nana. It's to help spread awareness. So snap out of it and get focused, Taryn. But I couldn't help think that my own mental health was taking a toll. Interesting thing is, here in the midst of this amazing experience, it wasn't the lessons of nature that surprised me, but it was the greatest lesson of them all, a lesson on humanity. It has been said by many different people and in different ways, but I think John Donne said it best 400 years ago. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent. We are all connected, emotionally, intellectually, culturally connected. We cannot live without the human connection. And sometimes we experience those connections in the most unlikely of places. For me, it was with a cappuccino and a dear friend. He would be climbing for hemophilia and asked if I'd climb with him for a course. Now me, being me of course, without hesitation I said yes. I will climb for mental health awareness. As a few friends and family members were really struggling the past year with anxiety, burnout and depression. I wanted to show them that they can achieve anything they set their mind to despite their challenges. Time flew from coffee conversations to climbing Kilimanjaro. My preparations were finally going to become a reality. But I had a small problem. I still couldn't find my hiking clothes after relentlessly searching for months. And to make matters a little more dire, my doctor just diagnosed me with acute bronchitis. But none of that mattered, right? I mean, I was telling everyone that I was going on this adventure and that they can achieve anything they set their mind to. I couldn't back down, and I wouldn't. I would even receive comments such as, Taryn, have you ever hiked before? Taryn, you know you need to be fit, right? Well, if you take one good look at me, you would assume I'm not your typical mountaineer. And what better way to rub that in than our retail stores that don't accommodate for this curvy, luscious body? <laughs> Two days to go on my final antibiotic, I finally found my hiking clothes. And guess where I got them from? From the men's section. <laughs> I see a business opportunity here. Any takers? <laughs> The day was here. We were at the National Kilimanjaro Park. I was standing by the Machami Gates in so much awe with these tall, lush trees and the sounds of monkeys playing. Nervous, but excited. I was actually going to do this. We began tracking through the forest. Conversations were flowing. Energies were high. Excitement was certainly in the air until my coughing started again. I was really struggling to breathe. Jason, one of my fellow climbers, noticed this and kindly offered to carry my backpack. I was so conflicted. I mean, I was keeping the group behind, 
and I was struggling to accept help. But with immense emotions of guilt and shame, I handed over my backpack. And he walked with me right throughout that day and encouraged me every step of the way. He showed me the impact that kindness and empathy can have on another human being like me. Not only did I see this in Jason, but I also saw this in our porters. They would carry 30 kg additional luggage each day. They would bring us a hot water bowl to bath and delicious ginger tea to warm our bodies. Compassion was the currency of Mount Kilimanjaro. After day one ended, they decided to pair me with my own guide, Charlie. And Charlie would be my sidekick, like Batman and Robin. And before I knew it, day one was by day two, and by day three, I earned the nickname Taron the Terminator <laughs> by my fellow climber, Will. To this day, I don't think Will knows the true impact that his words gave me to push forward for the days to come. We tend to forget how our words can be dangerous and beautiful, and that the words have so much power to ignite people and push them forward. Day four led to day five, hiking up and down in order to climatize, as Kilimanjaro has 40% less oxygen than the air you are breathing right now. With endless walking, we finally made it to base camp. Summit day was here. With the fear of the unknown and much excitement, we prepared to leave at midnight. With layers and layers of clothing, I put on my big white jacket and I walked out that tent feeling like the Incredible Hulk, ready to take on Kilimanjaro once and for all. But what the endless research doesn't tell you is that Kilimanjaro is extremely boring for seven hours straight. Nothing to touch or see or capture. Just the stars, the darkness, and a small headlamp light to guide you. It was 3 a.m. I was tirelessly following the footprints of others. Now and then I would fall asleep and have to smack myself back to reality. I was almost there. The sun was rising. I was close to Stella Point, the second highest peak on the mountain. Feeling nervous and e exhausted and depleted. And then it just happened. My body fell to the ground. What was happening? I mean, my mind and my body were fighting one another. It was one of the most brutal times in my life. Filled with so much confusion and only 400 meters to go. They told me I had mountain fatigue. Mentally, I wanted to keep going. But physically, I just couldn't. I had to make an excruciating decision to give up, fail, and go back down the mountain. While descending Kilimanjaro, tears streaming down my face, filled with so much emotion that I was so numb and alone despite all the climbers around me. It was the longest 16 hours of my life. And Charlie and I were walking down to the last camp, and Charlie could hear my endless sobbing, so much so that he sat me down on a rock with his big smile. He wiped my tear and he said, Hakuna Matata. <laughs> Swahili for no worries. But deep down inside, I knew what he really meant. That life doesn't always go the way we want it to. Hakuna Matata. It's going to be okay. My Kilimanjaro journey was coming to an end, but I wasn't ready to hang up those muddy boots just yet. I mean, how do you say goodbye to someone who has seen all your vulnerabilities, 
who has seen you at your absolute worst, but still chooses to push through with you. It was almost time to leave, and Charlie placed a flower garland over my head. He leaned in to congratulate me, and with his final words, he said, Taryn, you are a brave woman. You conquered Mount Kilimanjaro. Kwaheri, Swahili for goodbye. He then turned around and walked away. I took a deep breath and realized it took a stranger to come to my mental salvation. Charlie was right. Kilimanjaro certainly gave me the walk of a lifetime. But it wasn't all about the summit. It was about the journey and the lessons I had learned along the way. And there's this one lesson I'd like to share with you today. And what's a lesson without a formula? Now, don't worry, I'm going to keep this simple because I only got a B for maths. So C plus C plus C equals C. We need to have the courage to trust in others such as Charlie and trust in our own abilities. We need to have the courage to forgive ourselves even when we fail to reach our summit. Compassion was certainly the currency of Mount Kilimanjaro. It's a powerful force that we can all use together to heal the world. And the best part, it's mahala. It's for free, so we can share it more often. And conversations were flowing all the time on Kilimanjaro. It built trust, long-term relationships, and changed people's lives. These three C's can possibly be our solution as mental illness is on the rise. Each generation is getting lonelier and lonelier. But we are not alone. We have each other, a human connection. So don't blink or you may just miss it. Thank you. Thank you.